And at this point, I, I, I went. I was like, "Wow, it's boobs!" Like moment one. And I went. And I went to the IMDb parental oh, no. advisory section, and this is the note I was talking about. It's maybe my favorite note <laughs> or in the parental it. advisory section I think I've ever read. It is seven words. <laughs> Almost as many boobs showing as speaking. Boobs don't speak. <laughs> Almost as many boobs showing as speaking. What does that mean, what? Kyle? What? <laughs> Hello! Welcome back to the 182nd episode of Good, Bad, or Bad, Show, which several movies tell you should. Who? I'm the host, Mr. Brian Schiller. We're joined, as always, by the other host of this show, Mr. Kyle Hinton. Kyle? The film had boobs. <laughs> No good Lots of boobs. You're not wrong. And in fact, you, now you're not the first person to notice that. I'm going to, in a little bit here, very shortly, share maybe my favorite IMDb parental advisory <laughs> note that I have ever read. We will, that's, nice. tea, that's a spoiler. We will get to that in just a minute. The movie we're talking about today is a, a classic from 1982, I think, 83, something like that. It is <laughs> Raw, Raw Force. Force, which just sounds like a porno. <laughs> <laughs> As they band together with the incredible power of raw force, untamed and unleashed to kill. And I think they knew, <laughs> Kyle, because the title card, the way raw force is written out, the O in force looks like a butthole, Kyle. Oh, God. It looks like the fucking Greendale Community College flag from Community. It's incredible. Jesus. It's like a, clearly like a throwing star, but yeah. it, it, looks, it looks like a butthole. Uh, oh God! We're talking about raw force. This this is incredible. So, how did you find this? Uh, I believe I found this. Uh, it was recommended by somebody, but I believe when I was looking for the movie, Red Letter Media had done it years ago. I okay. think like almost a decade ago or something at this point uh, on Best of the Worst. Um, and so I assume that's where maybe the person who recommended it. I don't remember where I got this recommendation. I think it was. Maybe a Facebook message or something. Anyways, that was so I don't know how they found it. If it was through Red Letter Media or somewhere else, uh, but anyways, that uh, yeah. And this <laughs> film is just a fever dream. <laughs> it really is. How about it up there? We're gonna miss our boat. Uh, directed by Edward D. Murphy, whose uh, number one most known for thing. Is not directing or writing. He did two movies, I believe, this being one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, but most known as Liquor Cop Number One in Goodfellas. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Liquor Cop Number One. Oh, man. I am the liquor. Uh, so then we, uh, I just got to talk about, we open up on this movie. Uh, on on and it's on uh, Plex the streaming service yeah. whatever that is. I love that the opening graphic like like the opening like production logo thing is clearly a uh, it's like for global media something or another and it's clearly an Envato store like an Envato yeah. Elements pre made like After Effects thing. That it's like is... a I've seen this. It's almost always called like sports show mm. like graphics package. They it's like sports have, center. Uh, they have that and then they have like. A kung fu films logo or yes. whatever, and those things are obviously added well after the fact yes, of this film yes. ever being. Made. No, no, yeah, yeah, and that's what, that was what I was laughing about because the, the the little the little thing spins around like the Sports Center style graphics spin around. Also, these are running at like twelve frames per second. This part <laughs> yes. for some reason, but it spins around and it just says kung fu movies. <laughs> All right, great, okay. Um, but then we get into the movie and the opening credits start rolling and the credit pops up for Cameron Mitchell. Have we done a Cameron Mitchell movie? This is what I was oh, wondering. Oh, man. No, so, I don't think we have. That's the thing that was crazy to me. So for people who don't know, Cameron Mitchell is like the patron saint of good, uh, good, yeah, our it, best of the worst yes. of Red Letter Media. <laughs> Cameron Mitchell! My favorite year, our favorite actor. Um, they've probably done a, a Low blow, dozen... I think, being like one of the most notable like yes. phone-ins. Papa? I have gone one way, Lord. I have gone one way. 
a dozen or more of his movies at this point. And I was like, I don't think we've ever done a Cameron Mitchell movie. We or, did a Robert Mitchell one. I forget exactly. Is that a sibling? That's his, uh, <laughs> this is son. A son? Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, I was like, I don't or remember. No, maybe it's fine. Oh, boy, I got to look that up. <laughs> Anyways, uh, it, it's related. Yes. But yeah, I, I thought that was surprising. This is the first time we finally got new Cameron mm -hmm. Mitchell. He's great. <laughs> He's this not bad. He, no, he plays like the villain perfectly. Is he, wait, is he the villain or? No, I thought he was the mustache dude. No, no, no. Oh my no. god, who is he? He's no, he's the captain, the boat captain. Oh, that's Cameron fuck. Mitchell. That's Cameron Mitchell. Yes. See, I totally did. I had no clue. You thought he was Hitler? I was... He's not Hitler, <laughs> Kyle. He's a different guy. My bad. <laughs> In my defense, I have not seen many Cameron Mitchell films. Oh, so, my God. Yeah. That's so funny. Yeah, no, but uh, yeah, he's the boat captain uh, in this one. Which, But again, he's not phoning it in how he usually does it. You've seen Best of the Worst a lot. He's yeah. literally usually phoning it in by just sitting in an office on a phone and like, that's no. it. No. Get a fucking super trace! No, he, one, he has a pretty active role. Yes, he's running around, he's shooting guns, he's doing all Man, kinds of stuff. I feel like shit for not knowing that. <laughs> If I were nice, I'd edit that out and let you just do it again. No, I'm leaving fuck, that no, shit in. Brian. Uh, to be fair, the over the topness of the villain would not surprise me. That's fair. That is fair. Yes, the, the villain is is real goofy. Why in the hell are you going there? If you don't mind my asking. I understand it's where martial arts criminals meet their maker. <laughs> That's pure bullshit, my friend. So we're opening up. We get the opening credits, and we have uh, these people flying a plane, and this mm. plane lands at this island. And immediately there are these monks. Yes. That are just like in hoods. They're, they're like in, they're basically druids. They, they look like they're kind of, yeah. Yeah, arms. whatever, yeah. They have like, they have like pointed the like monk uh, not, robes. I'm not talking like D&D &D druids. I'm talking <laughs> like, like European, like, like German European Oh, I see what you're style. saying. Like the style of like the cloaks that yeah. they have. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but they're on this island that I believe is supposed to be like in uh, near China somewhere, maybe? Or somewhere. Somewhere in yeah, Southeast it's... Asia, maybe? I, they, I don't know if it's ever said specifically where I thought it was are. near the Philippines, but I mean, it's nearby. Yeah, so. in that in the rough area, South of, China Sea. <laughs> yeah, that area. Um, it's obviously a huge area, <laughs> but anyway, yeah. somewhere in it, they never explicitly say where they are. I don't think, but they do mention that uh, that nobody from either in World War II, like the Japanese, the Japanese Army completely avoided avoided this, this island. So it's somewhere, in, yeah, over there. The island was bypassed by the Japanese Imperial Army during World War II. But they land on this island. And the plane is being flown by Hitler, as I have mentioned. And I was like, wait, what is happening? Yes. <laughs> the guy who is one of the main villains in the I can already movie. see just mentioning Hitler yeah, demonetized. demonetized. As soon as I said, I'm like, oh, fuck, we're going to get demonetized. I mean, we I'm also have a freaking swastika helmet. Yep, yeah, there's nothing we're going to do about that one. This one's just, and the amount of tits in this movie, Kyle, <laughs> we're getting demonetized. Just, that's, I'm sorry. So, hey, get over to patreon.com slash GV or BB, because this episode's going to make us a big fat zero dollars on ad revenue. That's for damn sure. What do you think you're doing? But they arrive on this island and uh, they, they start unloading a bunch of women uh, mm. onto this island, and then they're, like, taking them to the monks, and the monks are like, take the clothes off. And they're, like, immediately just ripping all the clothes off. They're like, Jesus Christ, okay. we're not even wow. waiting around here. Take off the clothes. <laughs> just getting right into it. And I, I was like, okay, I, they're obviously being trafficked in some way to these monks. These monks are buying this, this group of women. I was, like, I was expecting this to be, like, Hard to get to Hawaii esque, like, oh, okay, we're going with this. Uh, Andy, what's his? How do you say it? Andy Sidaris. Sidaris. Uh, I thought we were going to Andy Sidaris with all, some of this stuff. It, you get kind of that feeling whenever we're on the boat later. What, what do you mean by that? Uh, with uh, kind of how like Hard to Get to Hawaii and Picasso Trigger kind of played out, where it basically is a softcore porn. Oh, we yeah. We get that later on yeah. when we're on the when no. we're on cam. Uh, yes. That's what this movie boat. is. Yeah. That's what this yeah. yeah. It's not softcore porn. It's not quite yet. You're right. I, I will admit it's not quite to the same level as like Hard Ticket to Hawaii and stuff. There's not as many like sex scenes necessarily, mm -hmm. but there's just there's more nudity, I would argue, in this movie oh, yeah. than even like an Andy Sedaris movie. Um I, I believe I saw a vagina several times in this movie, Kyle, which I don't know if I ever have in an Andy Sedaris movie. So <laughs> anyways. Um but they immediately just rip all these clothes women's clothing off and they throw them in this 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 cage. Bamboo it's like a it, but it's, it's a, a scale. scale. 
real. Yes. Yeah, they're, so they're measuring out the, the, the weight of the women to, like, jade. Versus jade, yes. They have these baskets of jade stone, and they're basically trading the women for jade that the jade is mined on this, mm. this remote island or whatever. Um, but anyway, so again, we uh, we talked about how there's immediately boobs in this movie, and it, at this point, I, I, I went, I was like, wow, it's boobs, like moment one. And I went, I went to the IMDb parental oh, no. advisory section, and this is the note I was talking about. <laughs> it's maybe my favorite note right, in the parental advisory section I think I've ever read. It is seven words, <laughs> almost as many boobs showing as speaking. Boobs don't speak. <laughs> Almost as many boobs showing as speaking. What does that mean, what? Kyle? What? <laughs> what does that mean? Almost okay. as many boobs showing as speaking. Wow. I assume what he means is there's almost as many times you see a woman topless as you do see a woman talking maybe is what they're or saying or there's as many boobs as there are speaking roles i get which is also probably not far off from the truth i don't know what it is but almost as many boobs showing as speaking i pondered that for hours last night kyle i was like <laughs> what is this what is the and meaning brian was laying awake in bed <laughs> i just like bolt awake in the middle of the night in the cold sweat <laughs> almost as many boobs showing as speaking <laughs> What does it mean, Kyle? What does it mean? Katie's okay, like, Brian, are you okay? It's like, I have to figure this out. Almost as many boobs showing as speaking, Katie. It's like, what? I'm getting a divorce. <laughs> Long have you hunted me. Long have I eluded you. But they, they don't sell one of the women because she's too thin, they say. They like kick her out and they're like, you're too thin. What's wrong with her? Oh, skinny. Too skinny. And then I love, she's like, hey, can I come back with you sex traffickers who brought me here? And they're like, no, no fuck, fuck off. off. Hey, how about me? Sorry, honey. Just tell them on the airplane. Bullshit, Buster. <laughs> I didn't have to come here. And then she gets killed she gets by a zombie? Yes. With a katana? <laughs> Just slice and dice. <laughs> it's insane. I say katana. Who knows of what kind of sword it is? But whatever. It's some some zombie with a sword comes out of a bush and just like yeah slashes her or whatever. It's like wait, what just happened? Then we cut. That's like the cold open kind of. Then we cut to uh, our main characters who are and I will stress this enough never properly introduced because nope. I don't know what any I don't of their know names any of their are. Names yes, are. no. And it was so frustrating because it felt so easy to just be like give us one scene that explains who these guys are. I know are. like one of them's name is Bob. That's about it. And one of them I think is Mike maybe. I, I, I but I, I could never remember what their names are. Um but they're arriving at this cruise ship. Mhm. Mm and they're going on a cruise and the only thing I know about them is from their they're from the Burbank Martial Arts Club. <laughs> Which is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> the Burbank <laughs> Martial Arts Club. Or Burbank's Karate Club, I think is what it is. Are you the boys from the Burbank Karate Club? In the flesh. Well, hurry up. We're ready to embark. And they're going on this cruise, but they have a little pamphlet <laughs> for Warrior Island, which what? is... Uh, why is it advertised? Why do they have a pamphlet, yeah. Kyle? Why is there a Nobody goes there. People this? avoid it. It's haunted. No, everybody who goes there like doesn't leave or something like that. Here's or, our tourist brochure. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, what the fuck is okay? But he's reading and he explains Warrior Island or Warriors Island is inhabited by a bizarre sect of monks that raise the dead. Inhabited by a bizarre sect of monks, widely blew throughout the Orient to raise the dead warriors from their graves. So that kind of explains what we just saw is the monks, they're the bizarre sect of monks, and the, the zombie is one of the undead warriors that they yes. raised, I guess, or whatever. It's, yeah, that's about and, on on it. Yeah, and I was like, so wait, why are these, it seems, I was like, are these guys going there? Why are they going there? And yes, the cruise they are going on is it's going to this island. Now, still glad you came, Mike. Sounds like it's going to be quite a trip. The reason is, uh, I think is, is because they... Uh, it's for like martial art outcast or something like that. That's what they say, but I don't understand. What but like, means. so it was a discovered by Captain James Cook in 1779, Warrior Island is supposed to be the burial ground of disgraced martial artists. The, some of them have a background in martial arts. Yes, That's why they're, they're, from they're the interested. Burbank Karate in Club, Kyle. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Are you the boys from the Burbank Karate Club? In the flesh. 
But I, I can't. Uh, okay, I just don't it's, understand it, why they're going. It's there. a it's a big ask. It is sure. very strange. Anyway, but they're going on this cruise that is a very cheap cruise. They say that was like very <laughs> yes. affordable or whatever. And we're introduced to the lady who's like the hostess of the Hazel, cruise, Hazel, right? Yes, uh, who was played by an actress who was actually dating Cameron Mitchell in real life oh, at God. the time, which is apparently why she's in the movie. Well then, uh, and then we're also introduced to Cameron Mitchell, who is the captain of the ship, wearing his dumb little captain's hat, and <laughs> Go Chin, who is his. One of his, his crew. crew I, think he's a, I think he's a chef because, like, he was talking about owning a uh, restaurant. Oh, a Chinese restaurant. Point. He yeah. says, Don't you want to open a Chinese restaurant? He goes, Yeah. You still want to own your own Chinese restaurant one day? Yes, sir. Hmm? You do, huh? You'll never make it on the way she pays. Never. There's only one word for you, madam. That is cheap. But he's, I guess, yeah, I guess you're right. He's a chef, but he's a shirtless chef. He's, yes. he's, he's not wearing a shirt. In this, he's got a little sailor hat on, and he's shirtless, <laughs> and he's adorable. I was like, what is? The, why do you have a little sailor hat on? What oh, is God. going on? Mrs. Buck, we're ready to weigh anchor when you are. Okay, okay, I'm coming, I'm coming. So they get on the ship, and we're, we're underway on this cruise, and immediately there's a karate exhibition. <laughs> They're like, uh, at the back of the ship, we'll be having our 10 a.m. karate exhibition if anybody would like to join us. <laughs> For those of you who like martial arts, we have an exhibition in, in progress on the forward promenade. You can see hey, our the hell's going on this right. Hey, hey, Jals, hey, hey this John ain't no playground, you guys. <laughs> Somebody might... <laughs> what the hell? And, they're just... and then they're, like, they're actually like finding out stuff and then... Breaking windows? Yes! <laughs> I... What? What? <laughs> Oh, hey! Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> like, and it looks like he intentionally broke that window. It's not a very well choreographed thing because you could choreograph that fight in a way where they're like really into it and accidentally break a window because mm. then Cameron Mitchell gets all mad. But this guy like very deliberately turns around and sticks his staff through Dude, the window. I hate windows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Cameron Mitchell's like, what the fuck are you doing? Uh, and then they keep fighting and then the other guy gets knocked off the boat or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> You listen to me, ma'am! They're wrecking my ship! You shut up! Uh, we cut back up to the karate exhibition. Uh, we're introduced to Cookie, who's the one of the only other characters whose name I know because it's unique-ish, and yeah. she is an, a SWAT cop. Go ahead, Cookie. He doesn't have to know you're on the LAPD SWAT team. Go on. They say yeah. they're doing a self-defense oh. exhibition yeah. and her her other blonde friend is like, hey, why don't you go volunteer? They don't need to know you're a SWAT cop <laughs> or whatever. And, and so Cookie goes up there and just kicks this dude's ass and just like flips him around and beats the shit That's out great. of him. And hey! <laughs> 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 Then uh, well, they explain they're going to go to this island, but but Go Chen is warning like the captain or whatever. Yeah, he's the only person who seems to know yeah. like, you don't go there. He's like, don't go to the island. He's like, this is a terrible idea. We should not go to the island. And she's like, well, some of our tourists want to go to the island or whatever. And he's like, well, whatever. It's a fucking terrible idea. I'm sorry, Chen. It's one of the places our passengers paid to see. Setting foot in the island will involve wrath of Buddha. Will you do me a favor? Don't be so damn superstitious. We're also, we were introduced to Lloyd at the little... Yes, <laughs> Lloyd my and his character. wife. <laughs> Lloyd, his wife, and then I believe Mike, who's the main cop, I think think mm -hmm. um he, the main cop starts hitting on this blonde woman lots of blondes in this movie so it's hitting on this blonde woman yeah i pay you a modest compliment you have beautiful eyes uh at a table and then lloyd sits down and is like you hitting on my wife nah i don't give a shit whatever and they like start drinking like he's like here you want a martini yep. <laughs> he says a martini which i assume is a martini oh, that's like a double i don't know here have one of my martinis um this is my husband lloyd how you doing? When we get together, the way to get by is pull out the booze and let's get high. <laughs> he gives them a martini and they start drinking. Then later, they, they land at port yes. the next day or whatever, and they're going out like sightseeing. <laughs> and they're like, Lloyd's like, uh, I think me and uh, Mike are going to head back to the ship. Why don't you ladies go shopping? And they're like, okay. And then Lloyd's like, it's let's like, go fuck! Yeah, well, why don't Mike and I grab a cab back to the ship and soak our corns in Epsom salts? That way, Pitch, you'll have a dance partner tonight. All right. Nine hundred and a half General Nathan Street. What's that? The Palace of One Thousand One Pleasures. The what? 
they go to a goddamn brothel because yes. Bloyd is just Bloyd's that kind of guy. Ma- he's a cad. He's that uh, kind of guy. <laughs> Uh, this is probably why he's my favorite character is because he just gets drunk, fucks, and is a general asshole to pretty much everyone. He's the worst. <laughs> Lloyd is, is legitimately a... <laughs> the worst. Like, but he's so over the top that it's hilarious. Come on, Lloyd. Oh, oh my God! God. What? what? Jesus! What? Wait a minute! I... Oh, beautiful. He is. It's very funny. Um, so they uh, they head to this brothel. Um, oh, meanwhile, we also find out that uh, Hitler has been trading the women for Jade. They, mm-hmm. They're discussing it at this point. But then we get to the brothel, and it looks like an in like a condemned building. Yes. <laughs> they, they go into this building, and they go and they find it, and they knock on the door. And they go inside, and they start hanging out. And, and Mike, the, the cop guy, he's he's not partaking. He's just hanging out, having a beer. Lloyd starts touching boobs like a, like a teenager for the first time. Oh, that's nice. Then I believe, oh, then Hitler shows up. Yeah, they, they bust in on this place. I, they're trying to impersonate cops. They're like, it's a raid on this brothel. Like, how, you know, you're, you're, you're running a brothel. How dare you? It's just a scheme to, to steal these women and sell them for yes, more Yes, which I thought was kind of clever. Yeah, they like pull the signs off their, their van or whatever. And then all it says, like, police. And yeah, they do like a fake raid uh, on this brothel. And then they just kidnap all the women. Um, and take them away. And meanwhile, our our main two guys run. They're like they go out the window yeah. or whatever and <laughs> jump and run away. Lloyd and the and the cop do. And you mentioned this earlier, but we then get the only line of explanation. Uh, I think once they're back on the ship as to why our main characters are going to this warrior island, and they say it's because Warriors Island is where quote martial arts criminals meet their maker. Why the hell are you going there? If you don't mind my asking. I understand it's where martial arts criminals meet their maker. End quote. And I was like, what it does sounds that like they mean? go there to die. Yes, but why would our guys want to go? They're not, they don't want to die. They're not, I, I don't get it. <laughs> it would be nice if they were like, you know, we pay our respects to those who brought knowledge before us yeah, or something. Yeah, or something. Like I just, I don't understand what they're, anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, but then we go straight from Brothel to Strip Club because that's yep. what kind of movie this is, Kyle. Yep. Uh, really diversifying our locations in this movie. Um, and they're in this strip club. Oh, my God. This and One woman is on the bar the whole time. I it's so the great. Whole scene. A fight breaks out. People are getting cut and stabbed and murdered, and she's just dancing the whole time. Yeah. Like, she sees this every day. It's incredible. <laughs> Um, but some dudes try to kidnap Cameron Mitchell because Cameron Mitchell is in the bar and they're going to take him, I think, because they something to do with the ship. I don't know. They The, the bad guys yeah. want to they, kidnap they, Cameron Mitchell. They don't want the sh- the boat going to Warrior That's Island. That's what it is. They don't want him going to Warrior Island because then they'll they'll see they'll. They're, they have their whole illegal jade operation going on there. Yeah. They don't want anybody going there. Um, but Cameron Mitchell's getting kidnapped, but Go Chen saves the day. Uh, and, and, like, he just beats the shit out of all these guys. And like you said, this whole time, the stripper's just watching this very blasé, still, yep. like, dancing. <laughs> as, like, people are that is somebody dying. who shot the mind, shut the mind completely yeah, off. She's just like, I, my shift doesn't end for another three hours. <laughs> I, don't, I don't fucking care what's going on. <laughs> then as they're leaving, the bad guys are trying to leave. And one of the karate guys... <laughs> tried like drop kicks through the window of their van. Yeah, what was this about? I don't know. It's he, incredible. He goes running in slow motion, drop kicks through the window, and ends up like breaking his yeah, leg. Yeah, unsurprisingly injures yeah. himself. Yeah, injures himself. And I'm actually wondering if he if injured he himself that, during that yeah, stunt probably. <laughs> and like literally probably. was on crutches for I mean, the they, rest of the they, time. Yeah, like tape up his foot and that yeah. just taped up for the rest and of the And he's movie. limping the rest of the movie yeah. and just has, a, has crutches the rest of the time. And I'm like, I bet he Guys, actually... we got five days to shoot this and one of our leads just got injured. <laughs> yep, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> But then, as you said, they want to stop them from getting into the thing. They weren't able to kidnap uh, uh, Cameron Mitchell, but Band-Aid Face, bad guy, who's like Hitler's muscle or yeah. whatever, uh, is like, don't worry, we're going to murder everybody on that cruise. <laughs> what the? <laughs> All right. I guarantee that ship will never reach Warrior's Island. The plan is already in operation. This time tomorrow, everybody aboard that ship will be dead. They're going to track down that cruise ship and murder everybody on it, which is like dozens and dozens of yes. people, by the way. Um, 
Then then we get to the party <laughs> on the this cruise party ship, is which is in hilarious. Incredible. This whole scene is amazing. Uh, our lady lady cop is is trying is getting hit on and being trying to be thoroughly impressed by this male stripper. Yes. <laughs> what do you do? I'm a male stripper. Really? That's interesting. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah. This, this male guy stripper this guy, guy goes up to everybody. He's like, hey, I'm a male, I'm a male stripper. stripper. What's up? And everybody's like, nobody cares. Nobody, please don't. Yeah, please go away. Um, and there's, so we're just meeting all these really interesting, weird characters. Could I have another sweet vermouth on the rocks? Sure, coming right up. There's this woman who gets brought to up to one of the karate guys or something. Uh, by like the hostess lady and she's like she's a model she's trying or it's not one of the karate guys it's some other guy yeah. she's like she's gonna be a centerfold in something my friend Betty is doing a centerfold I think it's good for her to be seen with attractive looking men and this guy turns out to be like a religious nut who's like you sinner <laughs> you we're in a <laughs> den of iniquity in this whole you're all going to hell <laughs> why am I doing it for the devil the devil yeah Look around this place. It's the devil's den. <laughs> Are you joking? No, Betty. The devil's no joke. Buddy, buddy, buddy. You booked the trip. What yeah, the fuck like are you, you doing here? The, you booked the trip on this this fucking love boat cruise. Like, I don't know what you <laughs> thought was going to be happening here. But he's, I don't even know. Yeah, this character is in like this one scene. But then we also meet my uh, my future love, my love, the woman that I, I love. Sorry, Katie. But... <laughs> We meet this blonde character. She's in the movie for like five minutes, and she's my favorite character in this whole oh movie. She's incredible. What do you do for a living? I belong to the mafia. He was a hood. What do you do? Me. I teach third grade. By the way, where's your boyfriend now? He's dead. For like the five minutes she's in the movie, and then she mm. just disappears, and we don't ever know what. So happened the one in the green dress. Yes. Yeah. Yes. She's incredible. <laughs> her opening scene is her opening dialogue. That the first time we meet her, she's talking to some guy, the wide-eyed motherfucker, yeah. whose only acting note was, "I'm gonna have my eyes like this and talk like a psychopath." He's dead. Ah, I'm sorry to hear that. Don't be. He was a no good bastard. Oh. Um, and she's, she's talking to him, and she's like. My ex-boyfriend couldn't make love to me unless I gave him a strip tease first. And the guy's like, w what do you call that? Is it?" And she's like, it's a fetish. It's called a fetish. My ex-boyfriend couldn't make love to me till I did a strip tease first. What do you call that? Fetishes. He was into fetishes. And he's like, that's sick. And she goes, I don't know. I kind of liked it. That's really sick. Hmm. I don't know. I kind of liked it myself. Oh. And then the okay. scene ends. And okay. I was like, this woman is amazing. Okay, so <laughs> Bri this is we're gonna go real quick here on Brian. Brian uh, wants a woman who's who's open about fetishes. <laughs> wants a woman who uh, is on the run. Yeah, she's on the there, run for murder. For murdering. Uh, who who knows how to kill a man? Yeah. And also uh, just strips down completely within five minutes of her screen time. You're that's, saying that's all this Brian like it's wants. weird, Kyle. <laughs> You're saying this like I'm the weird one. <laughs> Brian's ideal woman goes from wanting to kill him to stripping down within that course of time. Know what I like, Kyle? <laughs> he was a rotten son of a bitch. So one day I had enough. Uh, oh, I see. And you took this cruise to get him out of your mind, right? I took this cruise to get myself out of the country. Why? There's a stupid little murder warrant out for my arrest. Oh! The party is fucking nuts. There's this woman who's uh, has shows like she's like a tattoo on her ass of something that we yeah. see for a second. There's oh, a, some random redhead in the bathroom. Get trying to, guy, a guy can't get her can't pants off. Can't get her off. pants off. It's just uh, one chaos. Of, <laughs> one of uh, the I think his name's I think his name's Bob. Bob is talking to this one chick, and they just dump a cake on her. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Cake on her? It's so weird. Oh, man. <laughs> Meanwhile, then we cut over and um, <clears throat> main cop is back flirting with Lloyd's mm. wife, who's like they're out on the outer edge of the boat uh, because Lloyd is off being Lloyd, like cheating on her somewhere. Yes. Um, 
I, I got like five minutes. It's like, you're getting work done, work done in five minutes. All right, go for it. Yeah. Also, one of the other cops, I think the guy with the fucked up leg is sleeping with one of the other blonde women. Mm. Like, they're having a, a sex scene somewhere. Like, it, it, I'm telling you, man, this party. very hard ticket to Hawaii or like, <laughs> yes. the trigger. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but for sure. Because the two blondes are both like, I oh. think they're both supposed to be cops or something. Yeah. I don't know where it is. It's somewhere in this party scene. There's an actor I recognize from INDB. It, in the it, it, the only person only person I really recognize guys I didn't fucking recognize uh, Cameron Mitchell for some reason yeah but uh, his name is Tony Oliver and the only reason I recognize him is from voice work so the only thing that people would know him from is Lupin the Third anime do you remember that mm -hmm. early two thousands no nope. anyways he also was uh, did a bunch of voices and stuff for Power Rangers and was Ooh. like one of the like associate line producers for uh, Power Rangers early on. Nice. I was like, holy shit! What was so? What was he in this? Which character? Uh, he played the part of Bill. That's in the. Uh, that's what the credit is. I couldn't pick him out. Okay, uh, so I don't remember. But I was just like, what the what the fuck is this guy doing in this? All right. <laughs> But yeah, so meanwhile, main cop flirting with Lloyd's wife. Lloyd is cheating on him with some other, or cheating on her with some random girl, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Then we cut and uh, uh, <laughs> Blue Dress, uh, my crush, is is having sex with wide-eyed third grade teacher. <laughs> yes. What do you do? Me. I teach third grade. The line where he says he's a third grade teacher, the delivery of that line, she's it's like, so, so what good. do you do? And he's like, me? I teach third grade. It's so we it's so over the top and ridiculous. <laughs> Me, I teach third grade. Um, but she starts stripping, and they they're gonna like start going at it. And then meanwhile, we cut and we see the village people coming to murder. Yes, everybody. what the? <laughs> what the that makes sixty bucks, y'all. It is the village people. It's the village 100%. people. It's absolutely the fucking village people. They're, they're coming up. All, the, all you hear while they're coming up is, in the name. <laughs> It's incredible. Uh, so at Lloyd is now finished. Like the girl that Lloyd was having a, uh, a cheating on his wife. Oh. With, she <laughs> wants leaving. another drink. She's leaving the room she's and like, just gets arrowed. She goes, I want another beer. Thunk. Hey, where are you going? I want another beer. Jim. <gasps> My God. Ah, we're under attack! The arrow through her back and falls over, and Lloyd's like, oh shit, and shuts the door. <laughs> uh, and then, um, also, everybody in this movie, it cracks me up, whenever they're killed, no matter how they're killed, just violently spews bright red yes. fake blood out of their mouth, no matter how they're killed. Oh, like, God. they're shot blood out of the mouth. They're strangled blood out of the mouth. Like, it yeah. just happens yeah. every time. <laughs> Oh, and that's another great moment. So then we cut back, and and uh, blue dress lady is, is is she's now seducing, or they're about to start having sex with a third grade teacher yes. guy, and she's crawling in, and he goes, "Hey, uh, so my what if my he's like, what if my roommate gets done working out earlier?" And her response, uh, "I just thought of something. What if my roommate gets done working out early?" No sweat, more the merrier. She's great. I love her. Um, then a dude with a swastika on his helmet. Yeah, what is going on here? Door. Hold it. Holy smokes! Who the heck is he? <laughs> his first, his first thing to do, first thing before even seeing if anybody's in the room or anything, pour gasoline everywhere. <laughs> yes, he just starts dumping gasoline everywhere, <laughs> and I was like, holy shit! It's the fascist village people. Look at that. It's incredible. Um, and then I love the wide-eyed guy turns around and goes, holy smokes, who is he? <laughs> what are you doing here? You can't do that. <laughs> holy smokes. <laughs> holy smokes? Who the heck is he? Acting um, so bad. Then some dude in a beanie, and I don't know who this is. Uh, I think he was a, he was like some sort of martial arts champ, because he was introduced slightly earlier. Oh, as like part yeah, of the and, exhibition Yeah, uh, and one, of, one of the leads was like, this, uh, this is, uh, this guy, he was a East Coast karate champion, or whatever. Hey, Mel, how's life? All right. You know, Milt here is a contact, uh, full contact karate champion of the West Coast. Wow. Okay, because he comes in and him and Nazi, or now the Nazi guys start fighting. <laughs> and <they're, laughs> yes. that, dude, that fight is, they're beating it's the brutal. shit out yeah. of each other. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, 
uh, the beanie guy gets his face put through a window, and then he's just pouring blood the whole rest Ugh. of the fight, and they're just beating the shit out. It's just such a knockdown, dragout fight. It's kind of incredible. And then he ends up just drowning, drowning the him in the, guy toilet. in the toilet. It's yes. It's incredible. <laughs> But then the thing that was so disappointing, she is handcuffed to the bed at this point, yes, I think, she by the like, Nazi. Yeah, tied up. And we just never see her again. And <laughs> I think she burned to death on the boat. No! <laughs> like, we also didn't see the karate champion dude either. Yeah, I, they burned. just, both of those characters just disappeared. Maybe yep. he rescued her and they ran off and they're living happily ever after. <laughs> That's what I choose to believe, Kyle. I won't let her die in this movie. <laughs> There's a stupid little murder warrant out for my arrest. This huge fight on the boat. One of the girls gets kidnapped. It's the one who is sleeping with the cookie? guy with the broken leg. Or was that somebody else? Not Cookie, oh, no. I think. It was the other one. Okay. Like Cookie's friend Aline? that she was there with. Aline? Oh, Eileen. Eileen. That's okay. it. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi! Oh. The ship catches fire. Uh, fucking uh, Cameron Mitchell shooting guns everywhere at people. Yes. Take that, you dirty bastard. This is pure chaos. And, but testament of getting the shot done the first time, they uh, uh, inflate a raft. Yeah. You get one shot at that take, and yeah. they were able to pull it off. Yeah. Uh, but they abandon ship. They jump all everybody who's still left. They jump into this this raft and they float away. Um, and then we cut away from that scene. And then just meanwhile, we find out the monks are cannibals. <laughs> yes, like they're getting all these women. They're like, oh, they're they're getting these women. They're for getting sex, these women from like brothels. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, they want them for sex. No, they're just eating them. <laughs> they're eating them. <laughs> the guy's like, no, no, no. They're not having sex with them. They're eating them. <laughs> if the monks like sex so much, why not they go directly to a whorehouse and buy it themselves? <laughs> They're not buying the girls for sex. Then why are they buying them? For food. Great. Which explains why they didn't want the the skinny bride at the beginning. Yeah, that's right. She's too skinny. There you go. Okay, uh, we can't have the skinny woman. She's too lean. Doesn't have enough flavor. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. I'd have to, I'd have to, we'd have to like braise. It would be like, we'd be like a like a seventy two hour process. We'd probably have to put her in like a salt brine for quite a while, <laughs> like really to just get any sort of moisture in there. It would just take way too much work, honestly. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, let me think for a fucking second. It's just like a cheap cut of meat, you know, it's tough. It's, you know, it's, it's hard to it's hard to cook with. I'm not saying we couldn't do it, Kyle. I'm just saying it would be yeah, difficult. Yeah. Why, why would we waste why our would time? We? Yeah, why would we waste our time? Um, but anyways, our intrepid bunch are in a life raft now. And I love, they see a plane flying by. Mm -hmm. And Cameron Mitchell, to signal the plane, pulls out his revolver and just starts shooting seemingly <laughs> at the plane. Uh, what's that? There. There, a plane! Oh my god! Oh, 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 it sure seems like Why doesn't he have a flare? He's got a pistol, he's got a revolver, and he's shooting at the fucking plane. It's incredible. But it the plane is Hitler's plane. And so they see yes. them and they're like, hey, that's the people from the boat. Fuck you guys. We're just leaving you to die there, or whatever. And yep. they just fly away. And I also love everybody else stands up and is like waving at the plane. And Cameron Mitchell, probably drunk off his ass, is just laying in the <laughs> fucking raft. Like, I don't fucking care. Whatever. I, already, I already shot at it. I did my part. <laughs> So then they get, they wash up on Warrior Island. Yes. They wash up on Warrior Island and start wandering around. Lloyd is being an absolute shit, <laughs> as always. At one point, I don't, I don't want to go searching for, for rescue. I want to stay here and drink what's left of my vodka. <laughs> yeah, he just sl sits, it's gin, I believe. Gin, he says, oh yeah. He sits on the ground and he like polishes it off. He's like, we should have brought more gin. <laughs> The one mistake we made, Chin, was not bringing a case of gin with us. But why is the rum gone? Um, but yeah, he so he's very upset. He just wants to sit there on the beach. And I love, at one point, then Mike has a gun, and he's like, hey, come on, let's go. And Lloyd, Lloyd takes, takes it, it from him? And tries to fire at somebody? He's, he's like threatening them, like, hey, we're staying yeah. here. And then Go Chin's like, fuck you, nope. karate chop, boom, and just knocks his gun out. Come on, Lloyd. Oh, oh my God! God. What? Jesus! What? Wait a minute, I... Oh, beautiful. 
And then they just leave. They're like, fine, we'll camp here if Lloyd's going to be a shit about it. Uh, meanwhile, Mike and uh, the, Lloyd's wife, who I don't think we ever hear her name, mm. walk off. And they're like having a conversation. And she's like, Lloyd's a really nice, nice man. He means well. And I was like, no, he no. is not. <laughs> no, no, he does not. <laughs> mm. Lloyd is a really nice man. He means really well. He just drinks too much and he gets a little confused sometimes. And I love though, because Mike's like, but do you love him? And she goes, no. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that, yeah, no, that makes sense. Do you love him? No. So then they walk, they arrive at some cemetery. <laughs> Yes, yeah, uh, they're like, oh, this is the, the final resting place for the fallen warriors. The fallen warriors, this is the very holy ground, this cemetery, and they're walking through the cemetery, and fucking Hitler just pops out from behind. With a bazooka. With a bazooka from behind a fucking tombstone. It's so good. They start firing. There's one person who's like hiding behind like a tombstone and stuff. I'm like, hey, I, you know they don't have weapons at this. Or, at this uh, I, I wouldn't imagine they would. At most, like, you would think they might have like a pistol Why are you or cover in cover like that? It's so stupid. But they just start shooting at them and everything. And then I love it. Cuts and they're all hiding behind like a big rock, a big like tombstone or whatever. And Cameron Mitchell has his pistol and he's putting bullets in it. And I love, he says, Talk to Eastwood, do this in a movie once. What are you gonna do? Damn, would you? And I was like, oh, what is he gonna do? Is he gonna do the uh, do you feel lucky punk thing or something? Nope. No, he just steps out and I'm shoots. Cute. Yeah. I mean, I guess you're right. You did. Yeah, you're right. So do 100%. that in a movie once. I was like, shoot at people? Yeah, like, sure. Um, but they're able to, uh, oh, they get in, like, they're able to get in <laughs> because they're martial arts experts. Um, at one point, somebody uh, impales a guy through the chest with a flagpole. No. <laughs> yes. He's like so good. Through the chest with a flagpole. Uh, and then Go Chen fights Angry Joe. I don't know if you noticed that. Oh. <laughs> it's like, there's a guy with a Superman shirt, and he looks like fucking Angry Joe. Yeah, they were fighting on the boat earlier, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and Go Chen just beats the shit out of him. And then I love, there's this one shot where fucking Hitler has his bazooka out, and Mike just runs up to him, and he doesn't, nobody shoots him. There's like a guy with the, Hitler with the bazooka, another guy with a gun next to him, mm. and neither of them shoot him. Mike just They're runs up to them and, like, starts beating boom, the shit out of them. Mine, my bazooka. What are you doing? Okay. Something happens, and they're able to, like, the bad guys get away. Like, Hitler and the rest mm. of them, I think, get away at this point. Uh, and now they have guns, though. Now but they, they do have heroes. guns, and then the monks show up. Yes. <laughs> Surprise. Yes. Uh, fellas, there's some gentlemen behind us. Welcome, my friends. The monks show up, and they have, like, a parlay. They have a meeting where they go, and they hang out with the monks. They have dinner, and the monks are like, uh, they're like, we can help you, but it, you guys suck, and if you don't want to suck, you have to defeat our champions? If you want help, you must earn it. How? Fight our champions. If you defeat them, we will help you. What? This will not really go anywhere. I mean, I, they no. do send the champions, I guess, after them. They send the undead zombie yeah. ninjas after them, but I don't know. It's so weird. Okay. But then they feed them dinner, uh, which, spoiler, they're eating people, because we mm. keep cutting into, like, the kitchen, and they're, like, preparing Eileen to be <laughs> roasted or whatever. Yes. They're, like, slathering her with oil or base, something. Get, the, get yeah, that nice base on. Uh, and then also we see, like, a, a corpse that is already being eaten. There's, like, uh, anyway. So they're they're preparing Eileen to be eaten. Um, <laughs> and then uh, they also, during this dinner, I think, or maybe it's yeah. During this dinner, they also then just raise the undead. They do the monks do something where they just start raising the undead. None of this really makes any sense no, at this point. Just it chaos it, it goes crazy. Like, rise and come forward from your sacred graves, so that you can prove you are not the cowards and losers and bullies that society said you were. The, the whole point of the movie, Brian, is boobs. Yeah, boobs and everything else is just a curtain. Secondary. This is true. This is absolutely true. But they start raising the dead, and it's also a bunch of zombies of just like wildly different outfits. Like one of them's in like a almost like a samurai kind of like mm -hmm. outfit. Two of them are in like a white and black ninja out. Like 
Ninja yeah, outfits. Yeah, they cover it up, up as much as they can. It's so weird. This is like a completely random assortment of, of again, like warriors or something like that. It's very strange. But a huge fight breaks out. But yeah, and also every time the zombies are on screen, the film is running at like 15 FPS for some reason. And I, I it's like stuttering, and I think they, they realize that the zombies just look stupid walking around. And they're like, well, if we do something, maybe if we like Stagger lower them. the frame rate, it'll like make it look creepy or something. And yeah. it just doesn't. It looks really no. dumb. <laughs> the zombies show up. Uh, Cookie grabs an M16 and is shooting at them and just yeah. doesn't hit anybody. <laughs> and then Cameron Mitchell gets an M16 and him shooting the M16. That's it's not. So, He's it, like got his eyes closed. It's so much chaos at yes. this point. <laughs> He unloads a whole magazine with his eyes closed and then throws the M16 at the zombies. It's amazing. Uh, but then Chin's just, uh, Go Chen is just kicking all kinds of zombie acts, or ass. He's got his nunchucks out. He's just like beating the shit out of people. It's kind of amazing. Uh, and then, oh no, Lloyd gets sliced by a sword. <laughs> I'm so sad. Not, nah, don't care. I, I can't watch out the eye. Um, also, I love this moment. Go Chin uh, nunchucks a dude into a bush and he knocks over a torch and the bush he's in catches fire. And I was like, I don't think that was planned. Whoops. Um, but then they're, they're running away from all these zombies that are, they also, meanwhile, they did get into the kitchen and, and mm. uh, grab what's your uh, While this chaos is going on, while uh, the monks are distracted and the people are getting killed, are super bad guys. Yes. Uh, are like, hey, hang on. They're getting a lot of noise going on right now. You want to steal the rest of that jade? Yeah. <laughs> yes. They're taking the jade and loading it onto the plane so they can get out of there. There is one point that they said, all right, this is the last thing of jade we're going to get, it. We're gonna get and then we're done. Because if we get any more, we can't take off. Yeah. Get too much weight. Any more, and the plane won't be able to take off. <laughs> it's like, so how did it take off at the end of the film? Dude, I have a note about that we will get to it in just a second i was so mad about the end of this movie we'll get to it mm. um so anyways they're uh they're running they cross a rope bridge and then cameron mitchell burns the bridge and they all like fall yes. we get kind of like a, a a temple of doom moment there so good. also and then it's just as soon as that happens like they fall off the bridge it like super abruptly hard cuts and it's just the next day it's like oh god okay i guess we're moving on from that <laughs> Um, and then Lloyd just dies. He's dead now. No. Like he was, he had been pulling on through the night, but he just like, uh, uh, he's just like, uh, he's not, he's just being carried the whole time. It's yeah. like, uh, yeah, go ahead and put me down. Uh. Uh, he just immediately dies. And I, my favorite detail about his death scene is you hear in the background, uh, what's her name? The, the hostess lady. Mm -hmm. Uh, you just hear her yell. He was one of my passengers. <laughs> yeah. A paying passenger. <laughs> he was one of my passengers. A paying passenger. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, it's a great, that's a great little background Ugh. dialogue moment. Um, so the plane is full of jade and we see them, but also the, we see all these baskets full of jade. I, a hundred percent what that is. I don't know if you noticed, if you looked at some of the jade looks like pretty good props or whatever. Yeah. The vast majority of it, 100% it guarantee, foam? is floral foam. Yep. Yes, that is that green foam foam you buy at Michael's to put fucking fake plants in or whatever, fake flowers in. Absolutely. Because at one point we see like a piece of it fly and it's very clearly weighs like nothing at yeah. all. And it's not the worst version, you know, not the worst idea for that, but it was, they also didn't do anything to it to make it look, no. they literally There's like some of them up. that are like, it's like, some of them are green acrylic and yes. majority of it though is like yes, floral foam. Yes, it's that floral foam, yeah. There, there's some like, you you know, there's some like hero prop versions that they look at mm. that are, look better, but most of it is just that foam, which is very funny. Um, then they uh, and they're fighting on the beach as they're trying to get to the plane or whatever. And I love this, this great shot where one of the ninja guys throws a bunch of shurikens at Cookie, and she has a big staff of bamboo. And there's a shot of her blocking the shurikens or whatever, <laughs> and it's so <laughs> stupid looking. She's just like it's waving so the insane. stick around, and it's like. <laughs> It's amazing. Uh, and then she swings these sticks at two of the ninjas and they just backflip into the water. And I guess that Got him. defeats them oh, somehow. I don't be, know. Well, because the point they make out is there's piranhas in the. Oh, there's you're right. 
piranhas infesting this ocean water. Yes, they're everywhere in this ocean. Fresh apparently. water fish. Yes, not not these ones, Kyle. These are these are saltwater piranhas. Anyway, so yeah, the, then they're they're fighting more people. Uh, at one point, there is a pretty fun head chopping gag. They cut the head off one of the zombies, <laughs> and like black blood squirts yeah. out, uh, and that was fun. And then we actually get a pretty good fake like head roll down the hill into the water. I thought that was good. <laughs> but then, so Michael, I think Mike or whatever, one of the main cops gets on the plane, mm -hmm. and Hitler's on there, and they're like. Hitler, like, throws some rocks at him for a second. But the thing that makes no sense to me is he's on the plane. Hitler hits him in the head with a rock and seemingly, like, he guts him pretty good because yeah, he's, yeah. like, bleeding. And then he just, and then he just jumps runs? off the yeah, plane. He, he, like, jumps into the water. And gets eaten. And dies. What was your plan there, dude? Like, didn't weren't you aware of the piranha? I guess he wasn't aware of the piranha. Yeah, I don't know. his plan was to die. <laughs> I guess, yeah. He's like, fuck it, I'm just going out, yeah. Um, anyways, it was so wild. Yeah, he just jumps off the plane. I was very disappointed, because I was like, oh, that's like our big bad villain, and he just literally just kind of <laughs> kills himself. Uh, there's... So everybody. I mean, I guess there on. is historical precedent. There was, <laughs> there was a point where uh, Gonshin was, like, in the water... For a yeah. second, and you were thinking, "No, the piratas." Yeah, but, they, but he's fine. He's he fine. Just, they pull him back out, and he's yeah. fine. It's like okay, but okay. Hungry so. bastards. Uh, uh, great. Oh, only works one way. Got <laughs> it. Yeah, amazing. So then, this is the part I was talking about, which was drove me crazy, and you alluded to. They're all get on the plane. Mm -hmm. They're able to get on, and they're they're getting away. There, there's at least five additional passengers yes. than the two that was. Yes. Yeah. And it's still full of all this jade. And I was like, oh, I'm calling it now. This is the classic, this kind of movie ending. They got to throw the jade off or they're not going to be able nope, to take it. No, fuck off. you, they're rich. <laughs> yeah. I was like, what the fuck are we doing? <laughs> because they even set it up kyle mm. like to the point where they cameron mitchell's like get the plane up come on let's get up why aren't we lifting off well, Mally, get this thing up get it up and i'm like oh they're setting up that it's gonna be too heavy and they gotta toss the jade in order to fly away. Mm -hmm. And so they're gonna have to toss the jade. And they just don't. Nope. They just don't, they fly away and they're fine. Nope. And what then the we fuck? are given an incredible F you ending of to be to continued. Be, fuck you, what do you mean to be continued? There's no there's nothing unresolved. Everybody's dead. Yeah, all the bad guys are like, what's unresolved? There's nothing to be continued. I don't understand. I did the only other detail at the very end that's incredible is they throw a bunch of dynamite at the dock and blow it up. And then the dummies there, the, the dummy mannequins. Shots on it's so the, good. On the dock when it explodes are fucking incredible. Oh, and on top of the to be continued, the fucking uh Mike who is flying the plane. Oh, winks at the camera. And winks at yep. the camera. So shit, good. Eat shit. Uh, that all being said, this movie's fucking incredible. It's great. Good, oh, it's good, oh bad. my god. <laughs> it's not even an argument. This movie is very much good, bad. Um, it is. It is in the like I said. If you like movies like Hard Ticket to Hawaii or any Andy Sedaris movie, any of those, mm. it is the epitome of eighties schlocky. It's like pre Andy too. Pre -Andy. Uh, right around the same time period, but yeah, pretty yeah. close. Um, but yeah, the epitome of eighties schlock. Mm. Um, you know, Kung B Fu movie. explosion boobs. Zombies, like irrelevant, just like weird, like mystical storylines. There's cannibal <laughs> yes. monks, like it's just nonsense, but it's also not boring ever. It's just it move. It's like an hour and twenty minutes long, and it moves really well, uh, and it's absolute chaos. And there's tons of fun, really weird characters that are in the movie for like a scene, and then just disappear. Mm. Um, anyways, I I thought this movie was incredible uh, and ridiculous and terrible, and I loved it. So good, bad, approved. Absolutely. That's going to do it for this episode. As always, you can head over to Patreon.com, especially on this one, because like I said earlier, no way we're getting monetized on this one. <laughs> support us for a few bucks a month, get access to some bonus content and stuff like that. If you also want to support us, head over to TeePublic and buy some of our merch. I thought a wrong blue shirt. Links for all this stuff. <laughs>
in the description below. Kyle, you've been doing some fun things. I have been doing some watch parties recently that yeah. have been wildly fun in Discord. Yes. Uh, just pick a, have some viewer suggestions for a couple of watch party films. Uh, so far, we did the, the the China Salesman that has uh, Steven Seagal and Mike Tyson in it. That wow. one was pretty wild. And uh, the other one we recently did was called Drive, which had uh, Mark Dacascus in it. it was just... And not 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 the Ryan Gosling Drive, I assume. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Or is that driver? Uh, no, that's drive, yeah. But both of them wildly fun, wildly entertaining. Uh, we have Crack Some Wise. It's it's very there mystery science theater. Fantastic. It sounds like fun. I, I would like to join at some point. So I can't do Sunday nights. I'm in a bowling league, Kyle, because I'm uh. an old man. So <laughs> uh, on Sunday nights. So I can't do Sunday nights. And also, I've been incredibly busy with work. We have a bunch of big projects right now. But uh, at some point in the coming months, I would I'm going to I'm going to hop in for one of those mm. when I can swing it. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it sounds like a lot of fun. So head over again, Discord and all that in the description below. I have a podcast called This Film is It. We talk about movies that are based on books. When this episode's out, our most recent episode will have been the finale of our summer series, Allegiant, the final part of the Divergent series. Uh, so, yeah. Are, that's you, a are fun you ready for that to be over? I am. Uh, I am. It's been it's been fun talking about them. They are not good books and movies. Uh, the thing that's very fun about this is, and I don't know if you knew this, uh, they never finished the movie series. Oh, this no. is the first time we've ever had this. <laughs> there is a, a Allegiant is the final book, and then there is an Allegiant, the film, part one. And then there's no part two. Oh <laughs> man, that's rough. So it's gonna be an interesting episode where we're discussing a an unfinished movie series uh, to a finished book series. But yeah, anyways, we shall see. So head over uh, to any of your podcast catchers and search for this film is lit. I think that's it. As always, keep watching movies, especially who Raw Force. You like Which once again just very porno name. <laughs> Raw Force. Kyle. The O is a butthole. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>